Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys, come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys, come fishing again. Yeah, it's that time again to drop a line. So sit back and relax, and let's go fishing again. Come along as we join John Shaw and today's special guest. Reel them in on Fishing with the Good Old Boys. Good fishing. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Hi folks, I'm John Shaw. Last week, Greg Hines and Dave Galibi were teaching us the fine art of fishing. Dave was showing us his great flipping technique, and Greg was showing us his great wealth of knowledge. By the way, we got a lot of calls asking, where the heck is Takalai? Well, it's on the San Carlos Apache Indian Reservation. You head east out of Globe, and instead of turning right to go to San Carlos Lake, you turn left to the town of San Carlos, and watch for the signs. Or you could stop at the Copper Hills Bait and Tackle Shop in Miami, and I'm sure Buddy Culpepper will be glad to tell you how to get there. You can also pick up your permit while you're there. The good old boys will be right back. Well, let's show the people the exact motion we're using. One of my things that I see a lot of people do and I've had problems with is how much line do you start with? Dave, well, you know, sometimes I get too much line, I'm here and I'm all tangled up. <laughs> Where's the starting point? Well, the starting point is to get, hold this line like this, let it run on your finger. Uh-huh. Don't, uh, don't grab a hold of the line and hold it, actually hold it, but let it slide on your finger or the back of your hand or whatever's comfortable. You mm -hmm. can use your thumb, yeah. just like that and never hold the line. It's always sliding on your hand and then just pull some line out so you've got your lure down by the reel and your arm all the way out. Okay, so that's, that's about the, the right amount. Yeah, you got your rod straight up in the air right. and the lure swing, swings back to the reel handle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got about approximately 15 feet of line and that's about how much you use most of the time. Okay. Uh, and the idea is to just let it swing out and when you go to, once you get it out there, one, if you want to pick it up again, you don't uh, pick it up with the rod like this and bring it to yourself. What you do is you pull it back with your hand, okay. let it swing back, then all you got to do is drop your rod and, and raise it right. up. Right, there's, there's not an out. awful lot of rod motion, it's more in your hand. No. You just pull it. it in, drop your rod and raise it. Okay. And always follow the lure to your target with your hand. Uh -huh. In other words, you're letting it slide on the finger, so that's your control. It actually slows the bait as it's getting to the target. Right. How important is that nice soft entry, Dave? Is that uh, when you're fishing real shallow, it's real important to have a nice soft entry so you don't spook the fish to where it's going to take them too much time to make up their mind if they want to hit your bait or not. There's a fish right there. Yeah, carp. Sh showing his, showing you his. Right. Come on, baby. Whew. There we go. Nice fish. Got him out of that tree. He had you wrapped there for a second, yeah. didn't he? Nice fish. Fat fish. Woo. That's a nice fat one. That there's what flipping's all about. <laughs> there he oh, is. there's another one. I got a little guy. Boy. <laughs> I think you beat me on that one, dude. Hey, I got you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I think I tied you for this a big This guy fish. better watch out. He'll eat you. Eat him. <laughs> That's a nice one. I did real good out of these couple cuts up here. Yeah, they're shady. A little they trap the shad in them real good too. They do. Ooh, you just spooked one. Look at the boil there. Behind the wood. Mm-hmm. Oh, get that stick. Got it. Mm -hmm. 
What is this? No bite. Good watercolor. That yeah. cross to the left, that patch of tulies on that point. Mm -hmm. See us? Oh, there's one spooked out of there. Yep. Sure enough, those aren't carp. I don't think. I, don't know, I didn't see it. I didn't. Oh. I didn't catch it quick. And I saw a movement. And well, it's just. I haven't seen any on the bank. That's why I didn't. Uh, there's a carp right there, Dave. Is there? Yeah, I see him coming out. I see him right there. Oh, that's a nice little rocky stretch. I'll go catch some big fish back here if there's water. It shallows up. Who's the temperature? As soon as you get to that corner, it's 85. I just checked it. Oh. As soon as you get to that far point down the other side of the reeds, mm -hmm. it shallows up again. Oh. All right, Greg. How about that? <laughs> Boy, he flat hit it, and I said, oh! You're finally going to get a fish that'll break your line, huh? <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> oh! There he went. It's a nice cat. <laughs> you didn't want to touch him, did you? You know, after a battle like that one, Dave, it's really good to check your line. Boy, that's frayed all the way up here. You can see the bad spots right in there. He must have been pretty far down in that tree. Yeah, he had me wrapped pretty good there. So I'm going to pull about 15 feet of line off there and retie. But you got to always check your line like that because you, you get a lot of frays down there when that fish wraps you up in there. What type of knot do you tie, David? I, I tie the Palomar most of the time. Well, I do also, but I also tie the improved clinch. Improved clinch, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get you to show, you, show us that here in a little bit. If I can tie a knot. The knot you're, you're tying is, is fine uh, when you have a little experience with it, I think. But uh, if you don't, if you just whip it on there and tie it down, if your line is crossed over itself where it goes through the eye of your hook, uh -huh. you'll actually break the line at a less pound test than it is. Yeah, normally I don't use it on a real heavy line. Anything above 15 pounds, I go to an improved clinch knot also. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Greg Hines with this week's tip. This week I want to teach you a little bit, probably about one of my favorite techniques and it's flipping. Probably most people, the biggest thing they want to know is how much line do you need out? And what I do, I have my arm stretched out to the side and my lure should swing right back to my reel, my rod straight up in the air. That's the proper amount of line. The flipping action is very, very simple. It's all in your arm here. You pull it up and just flip your rod right out very simple smooth action. You can make as soft as entry as you want with how you control the line here. Probably but the most important thing is when you make your flip, let all the line out, bring your hand into here. Don't be flipping and sitting here like this because you're going to have problems catching that big fish. I think if you try flipping in Arizona, you'll find you'll catch a lot of really, really big fish. Good luck fishing. We're in the early mornings or the foggy days on Toledo Bend, and all of a sudden, and they're just flying through by the hundreds, right through the trees. Gorgeous tree. It's nice and wide. Be. I go right there at the root system and let it slide right down in against the, not as deep as it looked like. Well, you ought to bite it quick then. It's not far to the bottom. <laughs> Another big log under the water right here. What a beautiful spot. Yeah, it is. Right in the crotch of the tree. That's a good spot for bass to hang out. Seem to, seem to like that when the two branches come together. Hmm. 
nobody home. It's about right back there where it enters the Thule's there. Right in there? Yeah. It looks good. That ought to be the flip right there. Whoa! Whoa, we hit that one hard, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> I was concentrating on that flip. Yeah, I was. Right in against that tree and almost put me out of here. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> Hmm. Well, let's go on down the bank. Looking stuff for winter fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I envision that they might be over here two or three feet away and they have to swim around the tree or yeah. to work their way back into where they can actually eat your worm. One of the best attractants is making noise. David, what's your favorite bait to flip? Uh, Basically a, a jig. Whoa. I think we better throw I'll cast stuff that over one. here. <laughs> Bass, Bass chasing a little shad. He was there. after the shad, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Just reel it right through there real easy. Come on, fish, jump on there. <laughs> Where's my Cordell spot at? We'll buzz it by him. Well, we should have caught that fish. I'm going to throw one cast up there with the Cordell spot. See if I can entice him to coming out and hitting it. Maybe he's pretty shallow on the surface there. Oh, there's a tree he's sitting on probably. <laughs> Get a little bit antsy when you know there's a fish there chasing. He should be hitting it. Nope, tree again. Well, let's go back to flipping. All right. It should be sitting underneath these trees. There's real good shade there. Well, there's my spot back there. Oh, that look at that. See that log under intersection? Underwater that? log underneath that big log? Yeah. There ought to be one there. Right back there at the corner of it where it all comes together. Right. Right there, slide it in the water. Oh, nobody home. Turn Maybe they need a little noise. Let's try uh, making a splash here. Get on the other side there. Didn't seem to like that at all. This is a good looking tree here. Oh man, that's beautiful. Generally anything that's laying horizontal is gonna hold fish because it gives them the ultimate cover. Yeah, and that's where this little fish was breaking up here a few minutes ago. Yeah, see. just outside of this stuff here. Sometimes those can be the toughest fish to catch, though. Yeah. Is that a fish land? Yeah, that's, that's a, a carp, though. carp underneath that land. Yeah, I thought it was a bass Thinks land. Thinks he's a bass. <laughs> well, this is a whole tree laying down here. That's not. That's just a bush there, and there's that big limb there is the end of this tree. There ought to be a real big fish laying here in this tree. Oof. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh. get him out of the tree. Oh, right out. Oh, nice bass. Yeah. Which side are you going to bring him in on here? Right here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, that's a nice one. Yeah. 
He's sitting right there in that tree, just like we've been talking about. Yep. Right underneath the thickest, darkest part of, part of it. And what was that, probably the fifth or sixth flip we've made in there? Yeah, it's uh, been quite a few. <laughs> yeah, it's a good lesson right there. Don't give up on the first time, especially when the fishing's a little bit tough. You just got to work them nice out of there. Nice fish. Well, should we let them go or eat them? Sure. Oh, okay. I'd rather let him go anyway. He's a movie star now. Yeah. <laughs> Works kind of cheap though, doesn't he? You ever catch more than one fish out of a tree like this, David? Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you catch uh, as many as 10 or 12 fish. That'd be more of a springtime pattern? Yeah, more of a springtime where you got, okay. maybe this tree's in real shallow water and it's all, it's uh, a little bit dirty and it's, sun's out and it heats it up, whereas uh -huh. the main lake is a lot colder. And all the fish are just migrating oh, in and just they just like hang a magnet. on that. I, I fished, fished one tournament quite a few years back and ran into that situation. It was just unbelievable. It took uh, 12 fish out of one tree. Good from, gosh. From four up to seven, almost, almost seven and a half pounds. Whoa. It was unreal. It was just that's, the perfect that's situation. That's one of those all-time great days. Yeah, really. Well, I didn't see these fish right out here, or trees right out here, David. There's some right underneath the water here. Oh, yeah. They're not very big, though. They're pretty sparse, so it might not be enough to hold the fish right now. If they're in it, they'd probably be right square in the center. Yeah, I'm right down in the middle of it now. Just shake it a little bit and see if he wants to come over and eat it. I'll try this and see if maybe they want a, more of a shed type. Here's one of those crappie I was talking about, David. Yeah. That is a pretty crappie. Yeah, look how look how thick they are right in here. Oh, yeah. That thing is just it's got, got some real meat on it. A lot of meat on him. A lot of people have told me about catching, you know, three pound crappie out of this lake. That one there is probably about what, three quarters of a pound? Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. We'll throw him back and grow up to be a big boy. He even came, ate that plastic worm. <laughs> Yeah, they seem to like plastic worms pretty good. I think it's that little tail you got on there, though. What are you doing here, Dave? Are you going to change the baits on well, me I'm now? Well, I'm going to do a little experimenting here. What are you going to try? Well, I'm going to try a westy worm. Westy worm, huh? Yeah. Boy, the amount of trees on the bottom of this lake, you better be an artist with it. You're going to donate it in a hurry. Well, I found out that for some reason, uh, it's pretty hard to hang up these westy worms in, in places where you think there's no way you'd even be able to move it before you're hung up. I'm going to try a purple and red. You know, with these fish suspended out here chasing shad like this, uh, that old stand by the Cordell spot might be pretty good bait out here right now also. Yeah. Might try to throw one of those a few casts here in a little bit. There's quite a few ways we could probably catch him. Give this a whirl and see what happens. Back over here where that break was. I'm gonna jump down and tie on a Cordell spot real quick. Okay. This is a strong crappie if it's a crappie. No, it's a little bass. A little bass? Yeah. There he is. He's sitting right by off that tree there, wasn't he, David? Yeah, he was. It's a depth here, Greg. Uh, looks like we're in about, uh, Seven feet, six, seven, seven feet, yeah. Hmm. He's up on top, but you notice it's a little bit smaller fish, too, in the shallower water. Yep. What we've been catching. Yeah, I think those bigger ones are going to be wanting that deep water real close. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Not too bad. Yeah. Healthy. Yeah, good built on the fish, real stocky. He must have a real good food chain in here. Yeah, he must be overweight. He's got that Yeah, the piece of meat hanging down under his chin. <laughs> they got a double chin, huh? Yeah. Well, Dave, I've learned a tremendous amount today. It's been a very special day for me. Really appreciate you coming along. Well, thanks a lot, Greg. You taught me a lot, too, and uh, I really appreciate being on the show. Thank you, Dave. We'll be back in a moment. Boy, folks, I tell you, it's been a day. It plumb wore me out watching these two guys. Great fishermen two of the finest.
Masters at the Art of Fishing, Dave Galibi and Greg Hines. Greg, what kind of day has it been? Wonderful. It's it? been a great day. We've learned a lot about fishing. Dave's perspective of fishing is really, really interesting. We see what makes him a tournament winner. And uh, the new lake I came to, it's just been a lot of fun. Looking forward to a lot of neat shows. Fantastic, folks. So you join us next time. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys, come fishing again. Just drop a line.